Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Oh, for all I do, oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You are, I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams the voices of the children my family and my home you're the source and finish of my highest dream Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart, my contentment, hope for all. I do, oh Jesus, you are, you're the center of my joy, Jesus, you are, you're the center of my joy, oh Jesus, you are. You're the center of my joy. Jesus, you are. You're the center of my joy. Jesus, you are. You're the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. We'll now have acknowledgments and condolences. All right. Thank you very kindly. We'll now make room for remarks from the family and friends. If we could get you to come to this podium, if you'd like to have remarks, you would come up front to the podium, and we would ask that you remind yourself of the two-minute asking for the sake of the family. All that are interested in coming forth and sharing, would you please come to the podium? Anybody want to speak? Amen. That one there? Come on. Thank you. Anyone else? Right there, baby. Good morning. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. I just want to thank God for all the memories that me and Asia were able to share together. She was like my best friend, or well, was my best friend, one of them anyway. Um, I just remember all the times that we shared all the different times that we spoke and <laughs> laughed and 
talked on the phone. I just want to thank God for being able to uh, spend spend those times with her and family. Um, Asia was so sweet. She was like the sweetest ever. Um, anything she had and she could offer to you, she was willing to do that. Um, I'm just going to miss her so much. I'm just going to miss her so much. But I know she's in a better place. I know she's not hurting anymore. I know it. I know they didn't really bother her. Um, the fact that it had been so long since she was able to interact with her sons. Um, and she would talk to me about it all the time. Um, I just, <laughs> just from my perspective, um, I just, I mean, I couldn't relate. Um, I just was always able to tell her what I would do if I was in her shoes or if it was my case scenario. But, you know, we always had that, uh, those issues or situations where we feel like we can speak or relate to another one's issues and we can tell them, oh, I, well, I would have done this or I would have done that. Um, but she was really persistent and and she was really trying. She really loved all her kids. She really loved all her kids. And I'm just, I just, I'm so upset or sad that um, things weren't able to be what they were supposed to be as far as her, all, having all of her babies together. But I know that now that she's in a better place, that God is going to allow her to keep her kids together. And I just want to thank God for all the times that we shared and just just being around her. Um, I'm just going to miss so much stuff about her. Um, how she interacted with her siblings. Like, me and my siblings, we are close, but we don't have the, the bond that her, her, her and her siblings had. And it was just like, I, I just, I was like, just so happy to be around her and her family because her mom has, I mean, they have a lot of siblings and they're so close and the way that they were brought up, they were, they were brought up together, like they were born to fight together. And I'm just thankful for being able to be a part of that. And like I said, I'm just going to miss her and I'm just going to be able to, um, you know, spend time with her kids. And I'm thankful for that. Just being able to spend time for, with her kids and be a light for them and show them the way. Because now that they don't have their mom anymore, just speaking from experience, I'm not having a parent. I couldn't imagine being Desiree, as she's the oldest at 12 years old not being able to spend time with her mom anymore. Um, I just want to be a life for her. And I just, I'm thankful for this opportunity to be able to speak to you all and things like that. So I ask that you just keep the family in prayers, keep me in prayer. And that's all I have for you guys today. Are there any more remarks? Come on, come on, let's celebrate the life of this young lady. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, my, I'm Mary. I was Asia's neighbor. And, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of happy moments. You know, one of our greatest moments was laughing about the things that Nazir had learned. <laughs> you know, it, you know, because I was, I was his babysitter. And, you know, she said, Miss Mary, not everybody can handle Nazir. So I told her, I said, baby, leave it up to me. I'm a pro. You know, and she, she said, well, what you gonna do different? So, you know, I, I, I told her, I said, well, I'm, I was a mother of seven children. I said, and I have like 27 grandchildren. I said, so I, I probably done seen it all. So let me take him. 
She said, okay. She said, so Miss Mir, how much you gonna charge me? So I told him, I said, this one is on me. So you know, she bring him over and Nazir would be there. And the first thing he'd do, as soon as he run through the door, he would run straight to my closet and get my guitar. And you know, he'd get my guitar and he would take my hand and lead me over and, to get my other guitar. And we would have our jam session. But his way was, he would sit on top of the acoustic guitar and he'd strum it. And, you know, I'd create all kind of crazy songs and sing with him. And if I shut up, he'll come over and touch my lips and let me go do it again. <laughs> so, you know, I would start singing again. And then I, I shared that with Asia when she got off work. And she said, no, he didn't, Miss Mary. So, you know, I said, got a video to prove it. <laughs> And I show her the video. So, you know, I, I told her, I said, I believe he may not speak when we want him to, but just like God, God don't come when we want him to, but he's always right on time. So I told her, I said, don't give up on him because this baby has his own language. We may not understand what his language is. I said, but he has his own language. We expect him to come, to, come up to our terms and our expectations. I said, but... No matter what nobody say about him, he's unique in his own way. But if you just take the time and pay attention, you can learn a lot from him. I say, y'all don't know this by now, but I'm gonna let you in on something. Nazir got y'all trained. <laughs> so, you know, she told me, she said, Miss Mary, my son is kind of, you know, I, I noticed when I open up the door, he'll take off and come over here. He, you know, he, he'll beat her out the door. So I said, I, you know, I, I hear him coming because I hear her calling him Nazi. So I go ahead and I run to the door and I just go ahead and open the door and he'll shoot right on up in there, you know. So and I told her, I said, Asia, don't let nobody tell you that you're wrong. I said, you're a good mama. I said, because it takes a good mom to deal with a child that has his own way and still love him and take time and have patience and have understanding with him. You know, some some parents, when they when they see that their child is not reaching their goals, you know, they'll hit them every time. Every time they they hit a nerve, she never did that. You know, and I'd sit there with her, and I, I told her, I said, you know what? I just don't matter how many children God give you of your own, you can't never say you can't learn something from somebody else. You know. So, you know, she come over and she sit with me and then I start cooking and she said, Miss Mary, what, what is that I smell? <laughs> and I told her, I said, oh, baby, those are sweet potato pies. And I said, you don't know nothing about that. She said, well, I tell you what, I'm going to get to know them. I'm going to make myself acquainted with your pies. <laughs> so I told her, I said, well, I have seven children, so I'm making two for each child. She said, they ain't coming because I'm here. I said they'll be here. She said, Miss Mary, they not coming. Asia is here. <laughs> and you know, she do, she had that way. She go, I'm here. <laughs> and you know what? She was right. Oh my. None of my children showed up to get a pie. So I wrapped them each one up individually and stuck them in the deep freezer. Asia said, she would knock on the door. She said, Miss Mary. And I'm like, yeah, babe. She said, here for my pie. <laughs> And, and she would, she, she'd get a pie, and then whatever it is, she, you know, I told her, I said, you know what, I love you so much, I'm going I'm to let you create a menu. She said, all right. I said, well, whatever you choose, that's what I'm going to cook. She said, say no more, babe, I'm here. <laughs> I love that girl. You know, you know when she, she heard me, you know, one day, my mom had, my mom had passed in my apartment, and I had kind of went into this little shell. And she came over and she said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, I ain't having it, nope, nope, not going to be like that. And I told her, I said, Asia, you, you don't understand. She looked at me and she made me look directly at her. And she said, I'm not trying there. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're not going there. She said, I want you to do what you do best. And I told her, I said, I don't feel like singing. She said, that's why I want to hear it. So she made me sing, and I told her, I said, Asia, she said, Miss Mary, I hear you all the time through the window, hit it. 
I told her, I said, baby, I can't hit that note. She said, Miss Mary, I'm not going until you hit that note. Come on. You know, and then she, she, she went, hit that note, you know. <laughs> so I, and she made me forget for about a whole week the troubles and the, the pain that I was feeling. So every day she came by and she said, hit that note. So <laughs> she'd make me sing and she knew that that was my joy, singing and playing my instruments. So she told me, she said, sing. She said, I want to hear you sing. So <laughs> he's saying, sing for you. Anyway, well, the, the last the last song that I got a chance to sing for her, I'll sing it for you. Thank you. Says, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God though trials be great and the way seems hard it's in the will of God it may When God says go, yeah. oh go, go, mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Dang, it's hard to follow up with that. <laughs> I don't even know if I should say anything anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm Asia's cousin through marriage, most importantly through struggle. Um, I met Asia when she was just a, a toddler. Um, we would go over to Denise's house and they would leave to go out or go to ventures, and I'm sorry if I'm aging myself, but it was our job as the oldest ones to watch them. And Asia, for some reason, was always my favorite. So I would always go towards Asia. Anybody who remember her as a toddler knows she was a little bald-headed kid. <laughs> she just had a little piece of hair at the top. <laughs> so I would just brush her sides down and put a little burret at the top. <laughs> and let Brianna chase Tierra around because she, for some reason, liked getting naked all the time. I'm like, I, I'm just going to stick with Asia. You go chase Tierra. <laughs> but as we got older, I don't know why, I just felt like she just needed that extra attention and I will always give it to her. I will protect her. Denise had a lot of kids in the house now and with Asia being one of the youngest ones, sometimes she was a target. So I say, okay, Asia, don't worry about it. I'll be over next weekend. You just tell me who did. And most times I have to end up hemming up Shawnee. <laughs> I mean, Shawnee was a, he, he was a, a trouble when he was a little kid. So a lot of times I'll be like, now what happened this week, Asia? Oh, Shawnee did this and Shawnee took that. Don't worry. We gonna get him back. And we'll just end up jumping Shawnee. And I say, now when you hit her again, when I come back over next weekend, we gonna beat you up again. And I had to end up just keep beating him up because he just, he didn't care. <laughs> um, but as she got older, well, Brianna, I know a lot of y'all may not believe what I'm about to say. When I met Brianna, she was so timid and quiet. She was extremely proper, like her English was perfect. And she came around and she was like, hey guys, my name's Brianna, you wanna be my friend? <laughs> I'm like, uh, is she black? <laughs> and we would go outside and Brianna wanted to be everybody's friend so if somebody did something to her she'd be like oh they didn't mean it 
Yes, they did, but they're not going to do it no more. Brown, let me show you how to respond to that. <laughs> so, Toya, I apologize. She kind of took the lesson and just ran with it. So she, it's, I, I can't control what she does now. But I told her, hey, Brianna, you're the oldest. You look out for your siblings. I don't care if it's more than one. When we come over next weekend, we'll get them all. And that's what we did from childhood all the way up to adulthood to now. If something pop off right now, I'm taking these shoes off. And I just appreciate Denise and Brianna, Tierra, Justin, Shawnee, Eric Avante, all of them for sharing Asia with me because Asia was my pick. And I'm upset that we cannot be here or there for her in her last moments, but I'm glad that she's now able to watch over all of us. Um, my heart goes out to her children. And again, Brianna, if you need anything from me, anything at all, just reach out. Up. No. <laughs> um, once again, Uncle Robert. Yeah, I said that, but I know y'all laughing. <laughs> you know I'm finna say something stupid. But anyway, same thing she came back on from the beginning. Love mom. Do they think from yard to year? You used to come to my house, blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna cut everything short. Miss her. Love you. And um, try not to do the doo doo. But I am. Um, everybody be safe out here. And what happened, look out for it. Because you got other kids out here and just going through the same old thing. So on that note, everybody be safe. I love y'all. Be safe. I can't do no more than that. If I do, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. But y'all know y'all got me. Love. My name is Zaya, and I remember when Auntie, when Auntie Asia, when she was going to take us out to eat, she said, when we was getting ready, I was over at her house, she said, don't you throw all them edges out. I said, it's already too late, I already did. And, I, and, then, she, and then we was like, we went to go to Corral. She was like, why all the men looking at you? I was like, because you fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Oh! Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? We look like some leaves in this green, though. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm Asia's first nephew. First. Yeah, the first and only, okay? Amen. I ain't, I ain't feeling myself, cause I'ma walk around. Let me, let me explore. So, Asia always reached out to me more than Tierra, Jasmine, Alexis, Anaya, Jamaya, Zai. You ain't my auntie, but you count too. And Desiree, you reach out too. I'm your cousin, girl. Anyways, Asia was something like a flower. You ever had a plant, no matter if it's fake or real, but if you don't water it, it'll sprout. You know what I'm saying? You be like, I just, I ain't flowered this plant, what this watered in this fake plant or whatever, but it's growing though. You might be busy, ain't getting right with God, fight with your siblings. But Asia always brought everyone together, no matter how crazy she was, you know? And it's not a sad day. It's a tremendous day. Everybody smile. We in green. You know, green is a happy color. It's nature, you know? I want to sing, but I can't sing. I ain't going to sing for y'all today. But I just want everybody to leave 
peaceful and humble and know that Asia is blessed. And she, look, she's beautiful. The most beautiful is black woman I ever seen. And I don't even like black women. I'm sorry to y'all. I love white women. I'm sorry. And Asia, Asia accepted that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, y'all racist. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all might be prejudiced, whatever. Y'all racist. I don't care. It's something about the eyes. It ain't the hair. Now, now, now. See everybody laughing though, but I'm, 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 a, I'm in this quick. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Love everybody. And I'm glad y'all here and showed y'all condolences and y'all support. And I'm not an inspiration. Let me. Uh, Amen. Amen. And we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you to everybody who had ex moments of expression. We are now going to have a selection from Serenity. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills, no. Hey, 
of the streams of my life And I leave, leave my hands in Total praise to, to you Amen 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 You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. And I lift my hands in total praise. Can I say that again? You are, you are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. And I lift my hands in total praise. Somebody didn't get that. It's a love letter to God saying, you are, y'all going to help me here? You ever told anybody you love them, you say, you are the source of my strength. And you are the strength of my life. I lift my hand. When y'all think about whatever's going on right now, you can say, God, you are. The source of my, the only way I'm going to get through this is you are. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I'll stay until you say it. The only way I'm going to make it until tomorrow is because God, you my strength. Oh, I ain't going to get nobody over here. Let's, let's try it over here. The only way I'm going to come out of this right here, this right here, is that I know who is holding my future. And God, you are the strength. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you. No matter what happened, God is still in control. However bad it look, if you put your hand in God's hand, he will guide you. Yes, it hurts. Yes, pain hurts. Things happen. But God has a way of waking things right. He got a way of fixing things. Uh, I'm going to read a verse. I'm going to read a verse. Stay right there, musicians. Y'all sound good. Amen. I'm trying to have church in here. Amen. They called me and I came because my big brother asked me to come and share just a brief word. I'm not going to be all day, uh, but he is the strength of my life. Amen. Y'all too quiet for me. I'm, I'm old school. I said, he is the strength of my life. Thank you. Amen. That's how we used to do churches. Call and respond. Call and respond. We call out, you respond. This word says in Second Corinthians, and y'all heard it a bunch of times, but I'm just going to say a little something about this. Uh, chapter 5, Second Corinthians New Testament, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. God has made us a house not with hands, is eternal in heaven. And verse 2 says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. In other words, we know we got another house, and I'm really looking forward to the new house. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. Okay. I, I see you. 3 says, If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked, for we... Uh, we who are in this tent grown being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Because see, you don't never know when you're going to leave here and you start desiring to go to the better place so it don't end. Then it says in verse 4, For we who are in this tent grown being blur uh, burdened, not because we want to be unclothed. Okay, 5. Now he who has prepared us for the very thing is God, who has given us the spirit 
of a, as a guarantee. That's my New Testament scripture, and I'm going to talk like this. I got me a new house. I, I might not have read it too good, but my interpretation is, man, I got me a new house. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't care what it look like down here. I got me a new house. Isn't that a wonderful word? Isn't that a wonderful statement that, you know what, they say it all the time and I, I didn't understand it until I got in my 50s and, and I'm, y'all might say 60, but I'm 50 something. And, and it's, it, I used to hear them say it that, you know what, you'll never get out of here alive. Somebody say amen. I didn't know what that meant, sisters. I, I didn't know that in order to go to heaven, you got to leave here. I, I'm going to make sense for about five minutes. In, in, in order to get to God in his kingdom, you can't still be here. I don't know if... I talk to myself a lot anyway, so that's all right. Let, let, listen, young man, I appreciate you because you showed up and showed out. You know why? Because you know this may be my last time. I don't know. So I'm going to do what I do. I, I'm going to do what I do because I'm going to leave here one day. But when I leave here, I've made preparation. I don't know anybody else that know about it. I've made some preparations that I got me a new house. Anybody ever wanted to move? And you go home and you're like, man, I'm so sick of this old house. You know what? One day soon, I'm be in my new house. I'm going to have some new carpet. Uh, oh, my God. I ain't going to have the lights all dim. I I'm going to have me some new stuff to work with. And, and, and as you at home at your old house, you're still telling everybody, girl, don't look at this because you know what? I got me a new house, you know. I, 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 Sometimes I don't even know where it is. Sometimes I don't even have a down payment on it. But I know God ain't going to leave me in this kind oh come on help me somebody God not gonna leave me in this mess for much longer I got another place to go I'm preaching to myself amen thank you there's one witness that nodded amen there's times when you have issues in your life that you can't fix and you say, hands off, I can't do this no more. And, and folk don't know where you are, but they don't understand that you have started to say, I'm leaving here to go there. Don't know how I'm going to get there all the time. I don't know how I'm going to arrive at my new house. I don't know when I'm going to arrive at my new house. Mama, where's the mama at? Where's the mama at? Who the mama? Who the mama? Who's the mama? Raise your hand, mama. Mama? Mama way back there? Your baby got a new house. I'm prophetic here, you understand? See, we don't know what goes in life or what goes on before life ends, but God says she got a new house, and, and, and it ain't nothing like the old house. Oh, come on, y'all. In the new house, there's not the same concerns as it was in the old house. This writer says, we know that if this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we, talking about us collectively, have another building not made with hands eternal in heaven. Y'all need to preach with me right here. God said to tell you that if you die, he got a building that ain't going to waste away. And when you get to that building, you ain't going to have to leave it. Oh, y'all ain't shouting enough. Amen. Young people, in order to get to this house, you have to know Jesus for yourself. I'm, I come for the young folk. I really did. I was 16 and got saved. I was still smoking dope. I was still running streets. But I accidentally told Jesus to save my life. I messed up. I messed up when I was high and I said, God, if you get me out of this one, I'll serve you till the day I die. I was 16 years old. I accidentally got scared because I was on PCP and I told God, if you save me, I'll serve you. I didn't know at 58 I'd still be serving, but God says, I saved you then and I'm saving you now because you promised me. Uh-huh. So we know that if this house is dissolved, we, I'm going to preach it, got another building. 
up in heaven, not made with hands. Anything man makes is going to waste away. How many young folk I got in here? Hundreds. At least a hundred. Anything man does, it ain't going to last very long. There's a thing called design obsolescence. Design obsolescence is when they create one phone, they already got an image and a prototype for the new phone. Design obsolescence is, I'm going to give you the iPhone 9, 10, 11, but the 13 is on the way. I'm going to give you the 9, 10, 11 to get you ready for the new thing. And what I'm trying to tell you is, God has already designed this world that you're not happy with this world. You start to desire the, the world. In other words, this world ain't my home. I'm a straight, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. God designed it, so I don't care how good it is now pretty soon you're going to want to go home I just want to go home sometimes I just sometimes I just anybody been somewhere else and you just say I just want to go home I just want to want to go home and sometimes sometimes a lot of times we get in situations where we just want to I'm preaching y'all ain't shouting yet I, I, I just want to go home writer says we know that if this thing is over there's a better thing waiting that's the preacher right there if God allows this to be what it is it's way better where he is let me let me, let me read this to you it's an old poetry reading that I read and I kept hearing people saying it and it was, uh, God moves in the mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He plants a step down in the sea, he rides a mighty storm. Deep in infallible minds with never failing skills, he conjures up these bright designs and he works his sovereign will. You fearful saints, fresh courage take for the clouds that you so much dread. They are full of mercy and they're going to break in the blessings upon your head. Then he says, judge not God with feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. For behind the frowning providence, there hides God's frowning face. The last stanza says, God's purposes ripens fast. They're unfolding every hour. The bud may bear a bitter taste, but sweet going to be the flower. I don't know what this is to you or how you're feeling, but if you can get past this day, if you can move past this emotion, God said, I got a better place for you, a better experience for you. If you can love God unselfishly right now, God will bring you through. Can somebody help me here? I got me a new home, y'all. I'm going to leave here. I'm not going to stay long. 58 is a long time. Help me, Doc. I'm on my way out. Give me any key. Oh. Come on, do it. I'm not going to stay long. Because I heard the writer say, When this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I got a new building, not made with hands, but it's eternal in the heaven. One day Jesus, he went all the way up to Calvary they whipped him all night long he died oh he died oh he died until the blood was running from his hand he died until the skull had been pierced with sworn but oh Somebody say early, early Sunday morning he rose with all power in his hand. You know what he did, musician? He said, "Oh, 
power is in my hand. If you sick, call me. If you're out of doors, call me. If you're lonely, call me. Mama, if you're mourning, call me. Whatever you need, whatever you need, I got it for you. Come here, somebody. Farewell, young Asia. But I know one thing. You got a new home, and I'm on this side. I'm in my old house. I'm on this side. I'm wearing my old shoes. But I'm telling somebody. Yeah, one of these mornings, one of these days, I'm going to my new home. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to my new home every day. Howdy, howdy. You can say goodbye right here, but it's hello somewhere else. I just left the funeral to say it. You are Mark Abstin on this side. But the minute you're Mark Abstin on this side, God marks your present on his side. The writer says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh baby, mark me absent over here. Because I want to live in a great by and by. We're in the hands of our directors. We want to let you know we love you and we're praying for your family. If you need us, call us. We will pray with you. Mama, we'll pray for you. And we'll pray that things will work in your favor. God bless you. We're ready to do our committal. Mm, mm, mm. We're here at this hour to say so long, not farewell. Because those of us who love God will be able to meet again on the other side. We now commit this body of our dear sister, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, until we shall meet again in that great getting up morning. Rest well, Sister Asia, or Asia. Sister Asia, we love you. When I heard the news, I got sad. Because I have young people and I'm saying to the family, hold on to one another because God is in control. You're in the hands of our director now for the further. Family and friends, family and friends, we are getting ready to make our exit. Um, we are going to exit out of here row by row, so just follow our direction. And um, But before we do that, just a few words on behalf of Michael Atkins and the entire Serenity Funeral Home family. We thank this family for calling on us in your time of need. We do not take it lightly because we understand you have a choice when it comes to funeral service, and we were honored and humbled that you selected us. With that being said, we do have a small token of love we want to present back to you. It is a commemorative plate, plaque of your loved one, to add to all the many memories. Again, on behalf of Michael Atkins and the entire Serenity Funeral Home family, we thank you. May we have two ladies come forward to help us with the flower and the picture. Two ladies who are not a member of the immediate family come forward. Those of you who are uh, designated as pallbearers, you can meet us at the door. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. Shall we all stand? I love you, Lord, today because you care 
for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name no that's why my heart is filled with praise I, I, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I, I praise you, I lift you up. And I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name oh my, my heart is filled with praise oh I love you, love you, love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I, I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is with free. Oh, that's why. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, 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 that's why my heart is filled with praise. Nothing can hold me down. Oh, that's why my heart 